Welcome back to the seventh episode of the Behind the Bricks podcast. On this episode, me and Tom discuss the whole post-production process with editing, sound effects, and music. So, without further ado, enjoy this episode. Okay, welcome back, everyone. And uh, we're back. It's uh, Jared from uh, Dubrick. What's up? It's it's good to be back. What it's another is week. What's going on, man? It's so it's it's only been like a week for you guys, but it's actually been like it's been a couple many many <laughs> weeks for <laughs> many weeks for us. So I've got to kind of try and remember how we how we do these things. But uh, actually, uh, at the time of this recording, the first four episodes are out, and uh, they seem to be getting pretty good res- feedback, pretty good responses. So I'm uh, I'm happy. I'm happy with it. You need to. See, it sounds like there's a lot of you guys out there enjoying them. So that's good. That's good. It's very enjoy good. making them. Oh yeah, for sure. Ah, okay, so as uh, as your boy said in the intro, uh, big week. We're gonna do the whole of post production in one 25 to 30 minute segment. How exciting, eh? Very exciting. I'm. It's a good. I like post production behind the scenes talks, and I think it's it's gonna be a good episode. I hope Dude, so. Dude, I, I think that's how you can tell a brick filmer from just your average viewer. Like, yeah. the average viewer is like, oh, dude, that film is sick. Oh, it's so cool. And the brick filmer is like, yeah, but how did they do it? And yeah. there's like a behind the scenes video and they're like, oh, dude, did you see that? Did you see how he was doing that? <laughs> oh, man. I, lo- I love a good behind the scenes video. I absolutely love it. Uh, okay, so I guess we sort of split this into three sections. So we've got the, the, the core editing section. And then uh, the music and uh, sound effects, and uh, I, I actually personally, I, I really enjoy post production. I it's, do too. It, I've, I feel like it's one of those things. Like I always make this joke. Like when I'm in pre-production, I'm like, oh yeah, can't wait until I get into production. And then when I'm in production, I'm like, oh yeah, th- this kind of sucks. I can't wait until I'm in post. And then when I'm in post, I'm like, yeah, I, I just really want to get this out the door and uh, start my next one. <laughs> so it's like the classic, you always wish you're in the next step from where you are. But uh, right, I actually yeah. think if I was to if I was to put a finger on my favorite, uh, favorite of the three, I, I think I would say post. Oh, no, I definitely would agree because like, I feel like uh, animation is probably the... I wouldn't. Say, worst is is a harsh word. I would definitely say it's it's, it's my it's, least favorite <laughs> out, it's, of, out of the three. I actually think it's the hardest. Yeah, it's the for hardest. Sure. Like, even just like physically, it's the hardest because like you could like be there for an hour and a half. It's hot. I mean, it's hot now, but it's like it's hot. The lights are the lights are on you, and then all of a sudden your hand slips, and you've got to bin like the last hours worth of work. Oh yeah. It's like, or your camera battery dies. Like, oh my goodness, there I, are so many. Yeah. So many ways that brick filmers, <laughs> brick filmers cry themselves to sleep, out there. I mean, I find is. that um, I find that editing in post production is like, it's 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 so fun because it's it's the time when you finally get to see your idea and your dream and your your project That's come it. to life. That's it. And it, it's, That's it. And you get spurred on because you're exactly. like you can see it coming together and you're like, oh yeah yeah. It's like this is uh, this is exactly what I saw in the very beginning when I when I was writing this project. It's like it's finally coming together. It's like it's like making a pie. You know, you get your ingredients in the beginning, and then you're making the pie. But it's like, man, this is kind of boring, and it's kind of taking so long. It's cooking for the next 45 minutes. But then when the pie comes out of the oven and it's done, it smells good. It looks good. It tastes good. Yeah. Yeah. Comparing oh, yeah. brick filming to food, it's great. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. I guess this would be sort of the like. I guess like cutting the pie as post-production, yeah. putting it on the plate, and you're like, oh, we're so close to being able to eat this pie or watch this video. Oh, yeah, adding yeah, that... the, the ice cream on top and <laughs> the, the powdered sugar. That's what editing oh, yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the powdered sugar, yeah. Oh, my goodness, but uh, but we got we digress. We digress. So, uh, so we're going to, I guess... We want to talk about the key to easy and fun editing today. So, um, I, well, let's just, you know, system's not broken. Why fix it? Jared, why don't you take us through uh, your your programs you use in post-production, your uh, your methods, your your work uh, work plan? Yeah, yeah. So, pretty much at, straight from Dragon Frame, I, I usually export uh, my, my animation clips as, like, MP4s, and I drop them into 
I use the Adobe Creative Suite for editing, so I have like Premiere and After Effects and Photoshop and Audition and all that fancy stuff. And I usually drop the clips into Premiere and uh, put them on the timeline, line them up, see how long the animation is so far. And then, you know, once animation's done, I usually go into Audacity. Uh, I, well, really, like, once writing is done, I usually go into Audacity and get the lines immediately done. Like, I record the lines straight off and uh, request lines from whoever's voice acting. So I already have those on hand when I'm animating. So, and then I drop them in the Premiere and uh, match everything, the animation with the audio. Um, get a really, a really, really rough cut uh, straight in, after, in Premiere. And then if I, if it, my animation requires any special effects or anything like that, I usually uh, dynamic link it to After Effects and do um, whatever uh, VFX work needs to be done, like color, color, color correction or uh, muzzle flashes, explosions, lightsabers, whatever the film requires, I guess. Um, and then after that, it's really just uh, adding sound effects layer after layer after layer uh, onto the Premiere Pro timeline. And then music is usually the last thing that I do because it really takes me a long time to find music. I don't know if, if, it, if it's the same process with you, but like it takes me quite a long time to find actual good music that I can use and like that, that actually fits my project very well. And then after that, I do the credits and the titles and then bada boom, bada bang, export, throw it on YouTube, it's done. Nice, nice, I love it. So, for me, uh, we actually sound quite similar. Um, so I, <laughs> this, is, this is when, you know, like 500 of my subscribers unsubscribe. So I pull out the <laughs> pictures from Dragon Frame and uh, open up Windows Movie Maker. And uh, oh, I know, wait, 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 hold on. Let's, re <laughs> let's rewind, rewind. I have to change. Say that I one more time. <laughs> Say that one more time for the people change. out there that can hear. So I, so I take my pictures out of Dragon Frame, so that wonderful program, um, you know, Top of the line for break filmers and into Windows Live Movie Maker. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. No. <laughs> hey, I mean, oh my goodness, yeah. Every, every, literally every film I sit down, I'm like, right, we're not going to use Windows Movie Maker this time. I've had too many jokes, too many jokes. We've got to change it up. We know. We've got to change it up. And I just sit there and I'm just like, oh, oh, but it works. And I'm just like, ah, okay. This is the last film. This is it. Next film, we're out. We're out. Um, oh yeah. Oh my goodness. One day, one day I'll change. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so then I pull it all into Movie Maker, and just just like you, Jared, actually, I traditionally get the voices afterwards. Um, so that is something I am going to change uh, going forwards. I think for the couple of projects I'm working on now, so Dead Space and the Batman film, which hopefully will come out soon. Um, those are potentially the last films I do with the voices recorded after, so um, the next couple of films I'm going to have the voices alongside of me when I'm filming so I know how long to film the scene for or whatever. Um, but yeah, so I, I get the voices in afterwards and I sync the voices to the, the video and I do that for the whole film, just the voices, no sound effects, just the voices. So then I have the whole film laid out in front of me with the voices. And then I move over to um, Sony uh, Sony Movie Studios, like Sony Vegas. Um, so then I'm in there, and then, then this is when the sound effects come in. And I start layering up the sound effects, like you say, the color correction. Um, I usually procrastinate if, if, if the editing's getting to me and do the titles and credits then uh, as a little treat. Um, music, oh, I am so glad you brought up music. It is sometimes such a chore oh, yeah. to find music. Because it's like the make or break moment at this point. You've made this lovely film and you're like, I can't find any music that fits. Or that hasn't been used to death before. Um, so where, where do you usually get your music from, just out of interest? Uh, it, it's around f like a wide variety of places. Uh, nice. You know... I think we all used uh, Kevin McLeod uh, in Comitech.com. Yeah. That was definitely the, one of the first places Berg Filmers could definitely get free music, copyright free for your He's Berg still films. very good as well. I oh, definitely yeah. recommend go, o sure. go over there for sure. I haven't used him in a couple of years, but I usually, I try to get my music for free as much as I can. So that, whether that be from like the YouTube uh, sound library 
or even just like some channels on YouTube that I know that our songs are just copyright free and all you have to do is just um, link their channel in the description and you're allowed to use it and so mostly it's where my music comes from but I also have something that I use um, at my work that I'm allowed to download free music from and that's like a paid service and stuff like that and there are also other websites that I've used for weddings and stuff like that that I do have to purchase music for but I rarely do it for brick films because I try to keep my budget at zero dollars yeah. but it can it can get really expensive really quickly, oh yeah I think. very quickly and so it's really hard to not spend that money on a really good song because you know it fits so well with your brick film but it's like I don't want to spend that $49 on this song because this is just a Lego yeah. plastic film and I really don't want to you know spend money on that when I'm not making money on YouTube myself so it's like I get no uh, what's the word I'm for get no money back from it I guess so yeah. uh, usually I try to get try and stay on YouTube and uh, whatever free sites I can find recently actually um youtube themselves have created a really really nice uh, oh, yeah. sound library um and it's also got a whole range of sound effects as well so if you didn't know about that definitely check that it's in the, it's in the creator studio tab and like if you click on create it'll it'll take you through and and that's obviously because uh the thing i love about it is because youtube supplied it it's like it's all fine to use in your videos like without oh, yeah. a doubt yeah um, i think i mean i don't really use it a lot but I've heard that they've got some pretty decent stuff in there that can be used for definitely for beginning brick filmers for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, Jason Shaw, I think, was another one. I don't use his very often anymore, but uh, back in the day, he was. He's, if you Google him, his his stuff will come up. That's good stuff to use. Uh, yeah, so those are the sort of the core places I get my music from. Uh, sound effects is is very similar. Mm -hmm. um, you can sort of find them uh, in, in a load of places. Uh, shout out to um, Star Wars Studio. Actually, he helped me to no end uh, compiling a library of zombie sound effects for Dead Space. So that was really <laughs> cool. Because uh, oh, yeah, goodness me, like sometimes like obviously after a while, after you've made a couple of films, you're starting to build up your own libraries. Oh yeah, for sure. Of, My uh, library is so huge. But, <laughs> Editing is one of those processes, I think. When you go into production, you know it's going to be hard and you know it's going to take a while. Um, and scripting, I'm sure you all know, when you're coming up with original stories, like you, sometimes you just got to leave it and, it, yeah. and it takes ages. But editing is always one that gets me because I think, oh, this is great. I can, honestly, I can probably do all this editing in a day and it never happens. It never happens. It, it can, you just, you, you find tiny little things to work on and, and some things take longer than you think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it sometimes, it, it drags on a little bit. And especially when you're working on big projects and you just want to see it get out the door, it can get quite a slog. Yeah. But uh, so sometimes it, it comes together really well. Yeah, so where, where do you get your sound effects from for the viewers out there? Uh, so YouTube's a big one. Yep. Uh, I tell you what I haven't done too much of, which I sort of feel like I want to get into, is actually the Foley side, so making it, making the sound effects yourself mm -hmm. with just stuff from around the house. Um, because it's, it's one of those things, like, you can be, you can be sat on the sofa or whatever or in the kitchen and you hear uh, a sound effect and you're like, that's exactly what I need. And instead of just trying to find that online, you could just, just make it yourself. Like, set oh, your yeah. mic up. Uh, that's never that's never been something I, I've done a lot of. I know uh, Austin from uh, uh, Frame Five Studios. He's done it a bit in the past, um, but uh, yeah, that's always an avenue I sort of consider. Uh, but it's it's mainly YouTube, I guess. Yeah. The YouTube sound effects library, uh, YouTube itself. See, um, um, I I've used YouTube in the past. Uh, YouTube actually like instead of like searching in the search bar usually. Uh, I think with their sound library, with their music, they also have a sound effects library, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they do, yeah. And I think, yeah. I think I've heard it's pretty decent, but I've never really used it. It's getting bigger as well all the time. Like, every oh, yeah. time I go on there, I'm like, whoa, there's loads more stuff here yeah. than last time. See, YouTube's not usually my first option, because I use a site called um, freesound.org. And uh, oh, okay. it, it's a really great site. I totally recommend it for anybody out there. All you have to do is just make an account. Uh, you don't have to pay for anything, and it's absolutely free. And you can, there's loads of sound effects on there that people have uploaded, and they're really good sound effects too. 
and I've used them for a lot of things. Um, I think I in the past I've used like Sound Bible, but I, I think that's like really really old and not so updated anymore. Uh, but I used to download those sounds and I put them in my sound loader myself because I've been collecting sounds for like probably eight years now, and it's pretty that, huge. It's, it's one of those things you really want to when you're downloading sounds. Like just take a beat and organize your sound library. Um, so don't just like leave it with its default download title. Just rename it to what it is yeah. and file it away appropriately. You will thank yourself no end oh, later. Yeah, for sure. Like, because there's nothing worse than doing work you've already done again um, for no reason. Yeah, in regards to your Foley comment, like, um, Foley is probably one of the easiest things to do because everyone has a phone these days and all your phones have a digital recorder on it. And all you have to do is just put your phone up close to that sound that you hear in your life and just send it, send it to your email and you can definitely download it onto your computer and definitely layer it with other sounds. Like to, to be a good yeah. Foley artist, it's not to, to get one sound. In most cases, yes, one sound will work, but to get really good sound effects, you have to layer them up and build depth to it because uh, most sounds in real life are not made by... A, a single uh, audio wave. I'm not really. I'm no audio engineer, but uh, bear with me on that. But they're they're layered with different sounds. Like I I think Star Wars is probably one of the best examples because you know those sounds never existed in real life, and uh, I think like the Wampa was made from like a lion and yeah, uh, yeah exactly like uh a walrus and stuff like that yeah chewbacca as well chewbacca's yeah. like a dog an elephant uh a bear uh yeah and i think like a, yeah, the cool. uh stormtrooper lasers they were or the, the the blaster shots were made by a metal slinky i think if i remember correctly yeah it's like a part metal slinky i think and he did remember he like climbed up onto a mountain uh, he was like he was out climbing with his family or something and he found some telephone wires oh yeah and he sort of like brushed by them with some metal on his rucksack or something and it made like the Pick-ow! sounds or something and uh yeah so th- uh, yeah literally it's, it's everywhere and it's 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 almost where you least expect them to be as yeah, well for sure like uh like i say you can make most things from a spaceship from just like the cutlery in your kitchen mm-hmm which sounds ridiculous, but it's <laughs> it's probably true. It really does, but like it's amazing how the most random sounds combined together can make like a laser. It's it's weird to think about, but it's it's kind of amazing also. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's talk about voice acting for uh, for a bit, um, and I sort of want to introduce the uh, a program you've probably all heard of, uh, Top. Three best free programs of all time, dare I say. Agreed. Agreed. This podcast is being recorded on it right now. Um, shout out to whoever it was, whoever the, the like genius it was that that came up with Audacity. I mean, not, not not necessarily that came up with it, but just like this program is is pretty flawless. I mean, it's simple, mm-hmm. um, but it does the job just so well. Like, I don't think I could ask for anything else. Yeah, it's and like, like like you said before. Like I'm not an audio engineer either, but yeah. for me, it, it 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 does. Yeah, it's it's one of the best programs because like I remember, I don't know who who I think the reason I found it was Fancy Pants because he had like a whole tutorial on recording like how to record like a Darth Vader or how to record like a Stormtrooper, and I was like, what is this program? Oh yeah, I remember and that. And he's like, it's Audacity, and I was like, let me go look this up on Google. And it was free. And I think I used it ever since. And I think every brick filmer, probably not every brick filmer, but most brick filmers have used it or are still using it to this day. And it's one of the most simplest and easiest. And uh, it's it's just an easy audio program to record sounds and voices. And I tell you, if the feature that really jumps it up a level for me as well is there's an effect um if you're more interested in this I, i'm sure there are literally hundreds of tutorials out there but i will just sort of outline the key points there's an effect called noise reduction mm-hmm. and what that means is um so for example i'm recording this podcast and it's just i'm just recording my end jared's recording his end so whenever jared's talking my end is quiet so my microphone is still recording though so it's recording the ambient background noise and what you can do is you can highlight that section without me speaking in 
and uh, select it and hit get noise profile and then select your whole piece and it will actually subtract the ambient noise of your room from the whole piece and it, it really like it it doesn't do a naff job at all it, it really does the job sometimes it's not it's not like a perfect job but it's like it's like it's a like, solid 85%. <laughs> solid 85%. It's better than most programs out there. Like, uh, I have Adobe Adobe Audition, and it's like a higher advanced Audacity with a lot more features, but I'm much more comfortable using Audacity for these podcast recordings and for voice recording because it's so easy and fast and simple to use. And uh, But Audition's great as well, so if you have that, I would totally suggest it. But... Audacity is such a great free uh, entry level audio recording program, and I would I think we both would totally suggest it to anybody out there that is yeah. needing of a uh, audio recording software. Yeah, I sort of I, as I'm going through the years of making uh, different films, I sort of have like a list of stuff I want to upgrade. Yeah, and uh, so you like you want to update your camera, you want to update your lighting setup, and and sort of this, and like the, the older you get. The, potentially the more the more access to funds you have when you're making films and stuff so the more stuff you can get but like audio i update my microphones but i've never thought honestly to update my audio program because audacity just like like we've been saying it does the job and uh not until i was to get really far into it would i think about updating Mm -hmm. it's just it's so I can't like stress enough how easy it is because <laughs> I, yeah. I mean I've been using this program for like eight years and it has not failed me since and it's so golden because uh, it's so widely used there's tutorials for literally any effect you want to do you want to do Darth Vader voice you want to do a stormtrooper voice it's all there it's perfect it, it's all there. I think so, it's probably uh, like for brick filmers I think it's definitely the number one program you have to download for sure yeah yeah, yeah. If, if you're doing voices, if you're doing voices, yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, editing. I guess uh, you, you said you use the Creative Cloud. That's good. Um, I mean, I don't think it matters, you know, what program you use. Um, I know we. I think we've talked about this before on like equipment or something like that. Uh, yeah. You know, it's not about the program that you use. It's just like how you're able to tell your story and how you're able to uh, show us a good brick film. And I know tons of people that use Adobe and uh, Sony Vegas or even HitFilm. Hit, I can't stress enough, like, HitFilm is definitely one of the best uh, entry-level free program editing software for young brick filmers, young filmmakers out there. Because guess what? It's free. And it's literally just like, it's literally Premiere and After Effects combined into one program. And it's it's free. I can't literally say that enough because it's ridiculous how easy it is to get and use. And there's tons of tutorials out there. HitFilm has a whole channel on YouTube that you can go watch some tutorials and learn in literally a day. And yeah, it's so easy. And I think you've used it, Tom. I think Matt uses it too. I think Austin as well have used it for you know like lasers or uh, explosions, uh, combining CGI shots. Like I am, I am well and truly on the hit film train at the moment. Yeah. Like I've only just started using it for Dead Space, uh, because it can sort of be a little bit overwhelming to start off with. Oh yeah, for sure. But once you sort of just have a practice with it, it uh, it's a really nice program, and it's it is like it's. I think it's it's wonderful that you can make a brick film these days, um, and you actually don't need to spend like money on programs at all. You've got like Blender for your CGI. Yep. You've got Audacity for your voices, uh, HitFilm for your editing. That honestly, that's it. Another program, another throwback to an incredibly OG program. Everyone's first video game, um, Paint, Microsoft Paint. Oh my gosh! I actually still use that as well to paint on the mouths um, of my characters speaking. That's another process that I really should update. Um, I, in fact, I might look into HitFilm uh, to do that for a lot of speaking parts. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, what I'm doing to animate the mouths is painting on every single image, and then, yeah. Another yeah. free program that just came to mind I totally forgot about is GIMP 2.6. <laughs> yeah, GIMP. The classic photo editing uh, program that was free to everyone, and it's like, it's literally Photoshop, minus a few effects, but it's free. 
and it's so good because I used to use it's like it. an 85 80 yeah. percent Photoshop oh totally yeah. and I think we we've all used it before and if you don't have Photoshop that's okay GIMP 2.6 or whatever the newest update is it's it's out and it's free and it's it's freaking awesome because you can do anything in there like layers and uh, different effects on photos and you can do mouths in there you can do uh, anything your mind can think of uh, minus a couple of things probably I'm, I'm sure it's lacking uh, some Photoshop features but it's literally one of the best Photoshop equivalents in my opinion because it one it's free and two it's very easy to learn and there's tons of tutorials on online that you can look up and totally use and actually I dare say if you watched a Photoshop tutorial you could sort of follow along with it in GIMP oh yeah for sure I reckon most of the time or you'd have sort of an idea of what was going on so so don't be afraid to try that out I think like um, uh, in any of the programs like Premiere and all the Adobe programs and HitFilm they may look scary at first I guarantee it. you're gonna freak out when you look at it and but I promise you that it's not so intimidating once you learn it like it literally it took me a day probably to get the basics of Adobe Premiere and After Effects because after that it's smooth sailing from there literally watch a couple of tutorials you'll get more comfortable with it as you go along and it's really easy to learn actually it's, it's just it's just intimidating that's all it is like you're you will be able to learn it I guarantee it yeah same with blender same with blender for sure uh, I don't know about that <laughs> yeah so yeah so uh, we'll just we'll just do a little side step here this was actually how me and Jared met originally uh, we were on Twitter, and he was like, um, "Oh man, I'm I'm really struggling with Blender. If you uh, if you got any tips?" And I sent him uh, as a video of how to do uh, a wraparound space background. Yep. Which is which is actually a pretty uh, a pretty complex task. Looking back on I it, I never did it. I never completed it. And it was, so was hard. like, it was like, dude, this looks this looks so crazy. Like, I'm I'm out. I'm out. Blender is so tough, man. I made a donut. That's how far <laughs> I got in it. <laughs> oh, to be fair, I've never done any modeling in Blender myself because I just import the models. Yeah. Um, so, so the donut is pretty. That's pretty cool. I love a good donut. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, we're uh, we're getting on towards the end. I think. Yeah, this episode. I, think, I think this has been a good episode. Good, yeah, good uh, tips yeah. and tricks about editing and software. We've had a lot of a lot of uh, hearty content to discuss. Um. So yeah, the other thing I'd say just to close off with editing is uh, is hang in there. Like don't no don't give up on it. It is it is in many ways the make or break moment. Um, but if you don't think your uh, your production has gone that well, you can actually surprisingly swing it back with uh, some some tricks in editing. Oh yeah, for uh, sure. I know it's like it's the famous last words to say. Oh, we'll fix it in post. But um, I mean that saying's there for a reason is because actually some of the time you can actually fix it in post. Not that you always want to, but uh, yeah, don't don't give up. Jared, you got any uh, got any closing comments on the I, subject? I, I think you got it, man. I think you you nailed it on the head right there. Don't give up. Okay. Just keep at it. Okay. That's it. That's it. The end is in sight. The end is in sight. Uh, so thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of behind the bricks i've been tom and uh i've been joined by jared thank you thank you and we will be back same time same place next week have a good one everyone see you later